Okay, no tripods. Let's see if we're gonna wig this. I think it's gonna hold. Anyhow, um, I, I something I was thinking of. The um, you know, Cal. I think California is the one that started this. Our previous governor was Jerry Brown. Okay, easily one of the worst governors we've ever had. And got himself reelected to do it again. He was actually a, a governor back in the 70s or 80s. Did a terrible job. Just a terrible job. And then came back to win again in the 2000s during Obama or whatever. And uh, and he started this. You know, any crime under like 900 bucks is just a misdemeanor. Cite them, let them go. It started back then. He also his idea was if we could empty the jails. Um, you know, because jail and, um, you know, jailing people is racist. It was harder on certain groups, so we're just not going to arrest people anymore. And so they, they could say that. Oh, hey, look, the, the, our, our jail population is is uh, smaller. Less, it's a smaller population. And there was other stupid things in that as well. But he started that. Newsom comes in. Could have easily went the other way. Say, ah, that's a little, that's kind of crazy. But he just, but he you know, went on with it. The legislators were behind it. Uh, we have a government here that is not, it's not market driven. It's not about what the voters are after. It's about just whatever the legislation wants to pull off. Uh, and they get real, very little resistance for it. I really thought when they did the gas tax, because they did this before and everyone revolted, they did a pretty substantial gas tax and you know, cars are part of your, your identity here in California. Maybe it's that way everything else, too, but it's, it's just crazy. So they do this gas tax. They said, well, this will get him. He's going to get, this guy's going to get the boot. No, it didn't happen. You know, six, seven dollars for a gallon of gas. I thought, wow, that's strange. Because years prior, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't have survived that, a gas tax. Um, but anyhow, the, 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 the um, that is not a crime plan. Started before before Newsom, he continued it. Um, another thing you have to consider. I did a video on this a long time ago. Obama was still president. We were having our, I don't know which election, the election in between the uh, presidential election, and um, was, I did, did a video because I had to vote for a Democrat. Reason I had to vote for a Democrat is there were no Republicans running. And I voted for this Repu Democrat because she was kind of pro-water. We were going through the drought. And she said that just to get, you know, the Central Valley where I'm at, kind of get her on her side a little bit, kind of soften the ball. She wasn't pro-water. It was just a, it was just a, a scam, a uh, talking point. Um, back then, during the Obama thing, that's when the, the vote harvesting, I don't want to say started, but that's when they had they had accomplished it. They had perfected it. Uh, that's another reason you see so few Republicans anymore, or even if there's Republicans running, some that are really Republicans. There, maybe a rhino could pull something off, but that's going to be hard. There's no real, there's no real, there's no real Republican thing going on here. The Republican Party's over, by the way. If you haven't noticed, there is no Republican movement. It is a watered down rhino kind of thing. Let's go along to get along. We want to be liked. There's no leadership, so there's really no Republican thing at all. That's dead. That's been dead since prior to um, when they wanted you to vote for McCain. That was the beginning of the end for the Republican Party. And then Rumsfeld, I mean, uh, Romney, I mean, think about it. Uh, don't like to use profanity, but the GOP ain't worth a shit. That's why I, I, I registered as an independent and all that stuff a couple years back. I have no love for the Republicans whatsoever. Not the people, but the, it's it's a joke. Um... Where am I going with this? They started, it took a while to catch on. And Instagram and the videos kind of helped. When people were going into stores, and this is really, it happened more after the lockdowns. Okay. This wasn't so much during the lockdowns. I spent a lot of time at grocery stores. Oftentimes I go to a grocery store twice a day because of what I do at work and this kind of thing. I pick up stuff on the way, grab stuff on the way home, this kind of deal. Um, but people running into a store, 
grabbing a case of beer and running out because they know they're not going to get they're not going to jail for it. I noticed it two years ago. I'd seen it, heard of it, you know, locally. You've seen it on the videos. You see it all the time. But I really started noticing it here at home. I'm in the Fresno Close area where people were running out of stores two years ago with a case of beer. Um, matter of fact, because I go in late at night around 11 o'clock, 1030. It got to the point where I had to be careful. Once you get to that door, I'd be careful because you might get taken out by some guy running with two cases of beer or whatever, you know. He did like a linebacker. Um, but then it got to the point a little over a year ago where they weren't running out anymore. They walked. They weren't running. They weren't afraid of nothing. And they'd flip the bird to the manager on the way out. And nothing you can do. And he was right. I knew the manager. Can't touch him. That's a lawsuit. And you will lose. The, they would go after the grocery, everything. Can't touch them. So they would start doing things where they would barricade, make it where there's just a, um, uh, a channel to get out. If you want to get in and out of the store, you're going through a channel, thing like this. And like I said, not that they could touch you, but if they set that up, it kind of made it a little, uh, a little less appealing to someone trying to steal something. You had to go all the way. You, the beer something would be over here. You have to go all the way around, all the way back to get out of the store. They're pretty effective. But that wasn't effective for the crook, the, th the, the kid who's the actual thief, you know. What it was effective for, and this is the hard part, this is the crazy part. But people started to see this all the time. Around here, I can only speak for my area. They would see someone come in, grab the beer, whatever, run out the store. And then see them start walking out the store. Then you had people that were, basically have little character, weak character, but would never commit a crime because they had fear of getting caught and going to jail. All of a sudden, you're starting to think, well, if they're not getting caught, then I won't get caught. People that weren't normally criminals. But the law itself feared them enough to keep them on, on the straight and narrow to some extent. Well, they start to rationalize. And I have people that aren't crooks are doing the same thing. You know, they, you, you took people that were, you know, from the outside, good people, weak character. Um going in and stealing now. And then he said, that's what all the labyrinth of the, how to get out of the store and whatever, it kept those people at bay. The crook's still going to come and steal something. He's just going to push the carts out of the way or whatever, act crazy. Um, but that person who's not a professional, a pro at being a crook, a thief, he's not, he's going to go to some other store. Okay. And that's an attitude of this area that I live in. That's, uh, we've been in business here since the fifties. And, um, you can rationalize just about anything here. <laughs> That's scary. But you have a lot of people that weren't typically a criminal who are now stealing because they want to get theirs too. Why should this guy get away with it? No one's being held accountable. So instead of saying, hey, we need to stand up and, you know, get justice, they were like, no, I need to stand up and get mine. <laughs> um, we've had it at our, I work at a golf course. We've had people come in to do stupid things catch people doing something, come back the next day, try to do it again. And they'll say like, so what are we here? What do you do about it? What do you do? And there's nothing you can do. You can't call a cop. He's going to tell you, hey, you know, insurance or whatever. You know, can't, what they steal was, was it worth 50 bucks. They're not coming. And the guy knows. He, Go ahead, touch me. Go ahead, touch me. I'll sue your ass. And they'll win. So it's it's I did a video a while back said we're not we're living in a we're living in WROL it's without the rule of law kind of the law only falls pertains to us good people that aren't going to steal from others or take advantage of people the law applies to us but not to these weak people of low character and scumbags it doesn't apply to them see so we get walked all over uh and people say, well, you should leave California. I can't. We can't leave California. Our business is here. We're landlocked. Um, but I bring up this video because it's, it's what you see now is where I live. I can't speak for everyone all over. You know, I make a mistake sometimes. It sounds like I'm speaking for the world. What I've seen where I live, I cover a pretty good chunk of ground, is that normally good people, 
normal good people types, if it's necessary, will rationalize doing their evil. <laughs> um, and really from, well, I want to get mine too, kind of thing. But, oh, it's terrible. Oh, and I, another one too is, I, I was one of those, I never liked using self-checkout. I just go, you know, have a person wait in line and have them bag my groceries or whatever. And it's just got so slow. So I said, I'm going to try the self-checkout, see how this goes. I usually only have three or four things. Hey, man, this is quick. I'm in, I'm out, I'm back in the car, I'm on my way home. I don't spend time in the stupid grocery store. So I'd used that for probably two and a half years now. Uh, and one night I'm asking, I, I said, it's late when I get there. Not many people ask the manager, say, hey, because I know the attitude of the people here. You need to bring your groceries, you set them on the counter, you wave it in front of the scanner, it picks it up. You know, some people might skip the scanner, whatever the case is. I said, hey, what's the shrink like on this thing? How much money are you guys losing? He goes, it's a ton. It's a ton. He goes, man, because he goes, this is a Vons Safeway grocery store. He goes, they're considering shutting it down. But right now they're running the numbers. So I asked him like a month later, hey, what happened on that decision? He says, it's cheaper to take the loss it's cheaper to get robbed at the self-checkout than it is to have to add another teller, human being behind a cash register. So it's, even though they're getting taken, it's cheaper than adding the person over here. So he says, we'll just continue getting taken. The shrink is on. Um, rot. We're suffering from rot. It's a cancer. Man. Anyhow. And then it's probably take, you know, I think it starts here, the vote harvesting, the get out of jail free plan, all this kind of, or not even have to go to jail. I think a lot of that started here. I think that's pretty common knowledge. And it's probably spreading all over. Who knows? Hopefully it's not where you're at. Um, but it's amazing what some people can rationalize. Love you, God bless.